We are here at the Scouting Combine in Indianapolis. And Seahawks, now, baby. General Manager of the Seattle Seahawks. Been with the organization since the year 2010. Damn. He's John Schneider. You're getting John. old, man. You're getting old. Oh. You're a dinosaur for this, this business. <laughs> they were asking me questions earlier, like, hey, what do you think about Elliot Wolf? <laughs> Damn Morgan. I'm like, holy smokes, you guys are making me feel old. <laughs> all right, well, good. I just wanted to rub it in a little yeah, bit. thanks. Appreciate right, it. No yeah, problem. That's what I'm here for. Yeah, I deal with it all and the I'll time. I'll go get my report on YouTube if you want that. Later. <laughs> oh, I would love that. In fact, if you, I would love if we could have you on in the offseason, you can read my scouting report on me. Would you Would you have the guts to do that at some point in the offseason? I probably could. I, would you have the guts might, to hear? I might have one on your dad, too. <laughs> that would be even better. So you are a dinosaur. <laughs> it's official. Um, all right, so yeah. serious note. Yeah. Did you did you see see sense the Pete Carroll thing coming at all? I mean, did you have any inkling? You know, with Pete, you know, with working with Pete over the years, you know, older gentlemen like that, you have to be, you just have to be ready. Yeah. And so, um, not last year, you know, but we went through that five game stretch this year that was pretty rough. Right. And uh, you know. Uh, you know, our standards are standard, and, and, and we finished, you know, still with nine wins, but yet we felt it was yeah, didn't not feel up to par. Right. And, um, you know, Pete got together with Jody after the season, and, and uh, the two of them had their conversations. And then, you know, my job has always been like, hey, like, let's get ready to roll if it's time to roll. So that's what we did. Yeah. When you look back on last year, yeah, can you pinpoint, like, where it went wrong, so where we need to address things going forward? Yeah, I think we did that, um, you know, organically throughout our process. Uh, when we when we were interviewing coaches, was like, all right, we didn't really have the time to necessarily do it because we started. We were a little late in the process. Uh, we went through this stuff with Pete uh, on a Wednesday, I believe, and then so you know your you know the you know DEI training and getting all the questions approved and getting ready to go was uh, we were a little late. We almost weren't able to interview uh, Mike Donald. So. Uh, uh, yeah, no, I mean, you're kind of always doing it through the season, but I think once you start interviewing guys and you're, like, listening to everybody and their different core philosophies and, you know, football worlds, if you will, you can kind of, okay, you kind of see, you learn a lot. Right, right. And, and, you, and you go from a guy who was 72 to a guy literally half his age, yeah, youngest coach yeah. now in the league and Mike McDonald. What yeah. drew you to him? What was the thing that made you say this is our guy? Oh, wow. Well, the product first, you know, look at, um, you know, over the years – whether it was Ozzy Newsom or Eric now, we've always talked about whether there's a there's like a familiarity between the two organizations. We always you felt seem like, like sisters or cousins it, 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 or brothers or whatever. Yes, yes. It's I like don't you're know. the NFC version of them. Are they the AFC version yeah, of you? They're always of drafting ways. players that we're getting ready to take and, right. you know, vice versa or going after the same players in free agency. Just big, bad killers is what you guys I don't know pillage. which. I don't know right. why that happened. But uh, so just being attracted to the Raven organization and then, you know, watching – Again, the product, watching the film, watching uh, what, what he did at Michigan, watching how they, you know, he goes back to the Ravens, what they did, you know, with the Ravens since he came back, and then, you know, watching Michigan play this year. Yeah. You know, I was at Michigan on a Friday, and I think they had like 24 guys, you know, to go through. And, um, you know, so, and then when you sit down with them, so you see the product, and you sit down, and you see the clarity, you see the uh, maturity, uh, you see the football intelligence, and it just, it just, Stands out. I don't know how else to, to yeah. uh, explain it other than that. Well, it almost feels like a carbon copy or like a repeat of history of like, you know, what, hey, it's, it's Pete and Gus Bradley, and here we go, Seattle 3, and yes. we're going to be a defensive innovating team. Yeah. I mean, did, did you intend for that to happen or that no. happened organically? <laughs> no, I wish yeah. I could say yes. Right. But, uh, you know, doing all the background research, like I said, we weren't able to speak with Mike yeah. in that first round. So, uh, you know, being able to speak to all, all of our relationships – with the people that have been interviewing, we're able to interview them. I had a number of my friends and, and, and uh, with our relationships around the league that basically said, hey, you know, uh, the two of you guys, I think, would really hit it off. And then the people we had in our room, you know, um, Jody and, and uh, you know, everybody was included in the search. Every, every just kind of really, it, it just stood out. You're, you're interviewing somebody for an hour and a half, and it felt like 20 minutes. Yeah, so it, it stands sign. up pretty quick. Right. You know, when, when you point out the similarities between the two organizations, the Seahawks and the Ravens, that had to make it even more impactful to you. It did. When you played the Ravens this year, the outcome of that game, not just we have to change, but maybe somebody on that staff is who we need to come in here and shepherd this change. Yeah, had a couple of players ask me, you know, after the game, who's the, you know, what was that? 
what just happened? Who was that? Right. Who was the coordinator? You know what? What was, was it about that, the defense? Yeah, that, that, well, that. that was ridiculous. You know, right. you know the, you know the 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 um, complexity right through like the vagueness or whatever. I mean, it, it stood out. Did, do you did you not get the memo, right? You didn't get the memo this year. You're, you're you 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 hired a defensive head coach. <laughs> so yeah, you're, you're supposed, supposed to hire to, somebody yes. from Shanahan and yes. McVay's coaching tree, or you're yes. just you're an idiot. Yes, especially if you come from Green Bay. Right? I, you're you're crazy. I mean, the, what yes, are you doing? I mean, yes. it, it almost yeah. like I admire you. Yeah. I really do yeah. to take this approach. I'm because I'm as an ex quarterback. I'm sick of hearing about quarterback OC and that whole thing. I yeah. really am. Right? Well, do you feel like it gives you a competitive advantage anyway? Or are you thinking of McVay and Shanahan in the NFC yeah, West? Uh, and you know, okay. able to speak to those guys and you know, you know, asking them about what they think of the league. And you know, those guys were gracious enough to spend you know time with me and and uh, you know, just kind of like in your own mind, you know, understand that you're you're headed down the right path. And you know, I had somebody you know tell me, hey, you know, this this is the uh, defensive version of Sean McVay yeah, and, sure. and the way he communicates and right. then. And so in our division, you know, Drew Petzing's a up and coming play one. caller, and, the and then you have Kyle and, and you know Sean. I mean, you know, I I guess in our division it's like you know pick your poison, yeah. right? So yeah. this was Mike was just a great fit. I think you guys will really enjoy. It. I don't know if you've met him yet or not. No, this, not this, yet. I'm a, a huge fan. Of him. Yeah. I mean, they're D. I I love the defensive yeah. scheme. Yeah. So look, it's still a quarterback driven league. Yeah. Yep. And Geno Smith, you did some contractual stuff recently. It. it is it fair to say he's QB one, or is it competition, or TBD? Where yeah, are we hope we? They, we hope there to be competition, but I mean he's been our starter two years now, and that was really just, you know, we have triggers in there, automatic triggers. It was just a matter of when we were going to do it, right? So having the roster bonus convert to the signing bonus just to give us more uh, cap room. We didn't we didn't uh, you know foresee the cap going up as much as it did, uh, but to be able to have that you know create that room was important for would us. Would you as have well. not activated the trigger if you had? No, we would we would have done, but we would have done it anyway. But what I didn't, do you think I didn't it was going to be? I was thinking 249. Ah, you were yeah. high. That were, okay. yeah, that's high. Most were yeah. low, low 240s. Yeah, I can't give you my insider guy, but yeah, it was 249 was the number. <laughs> and then when he said 245, it was like, let's right. go. Right. So, yeah. You, uh, I got to ask you about one of your rookies. Who, yeah. I mean, he was maybe the most fun rookie to watch on the defensive side of the ball this year. Yeah. Right? Devin Witherspoon. You know, talk about him. You know, what led you to drafting him last year, all of that, and kind of the, the influence he has on your, your yeah. young guys on your team right now? Yeah, well, your dad would have played against Dale Carter. Yeah. And he reminded me a lot of Dale and that, right. you know, he could play inside, he could play outside, his feel for route concepts behind him, yeah. his, uh, his physicality, uh, the love of the game. And, and you know, he missed, uh, I want to say he missed four games. Right. And uh, so we missed him in the first game. And then we missed him down a stretch a little bit there, too. But, uh He's an infectious personality. You know, he works his tail off. It's important to him. Uh, he got a little light at the end of the season. I think he was like 178, uh, 180 yeah. right in there. That rookie wearing down body yep. mode, right? Yeah, so we got to put some body armor on him. Right. But, uh, you know, really excited. And, you know, we had, we had definitely, you know, discussed those quarterbacks up there. But for him to be available for us at that point was extremely important. And, uh, yeah, I guess two years in a row, you know, up in Seattle, you don't get – you know, offensive rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year. It just doesn't happen up there. Yeah, no, it doesn't happen. I know you guys are kind of like lost on the see, radar. Yeah, up I'm there. not sure how many. Do you do you sacks or interceptions yet happen? Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> it's, yeah the, the stats are all that matters this day and age. Uh, what what about you know the the process with Mike McDonald and evaluating? Like, is there a thing you have to go through? You know, with Pete, he probably had his own vision of guys, yeah. but Mike's coming from a different school of thought and how they do things. So how much do you converse with yeah. him and kind of figure out this new formula? Yeah, we do. I mean, nonstop. So, like I said, 15 years ago, you know, uh, the Pack or I was working with the Packers. We were the youngest team in the NFL. Seattle hired uh, uh, Pete. You know, being at SC, they wanted to be a young football team. So we came down here. We were learning each other. You know, building our philosophies by position. Uh, but really, you know, uh, Mike and I have done that as well. But there's. There's a you kind of get used to things, and you know, just maybe last week, a week before, I was, he would, he'd asked me a question, and I thought to myself, you know, wow, like I haven't sat down and told him like how our free agency meetings are going to go or what the draft looks like. Like, I, you know, you just take things for granted right. after a while, right? So, um, but no, I think you know, like play like a raven, always compete. Those things are very similar, and so I don't think it's going to be that drastic yeah. by position. Gotcha, Coach McDonald was asked earlier this week about. Drew Locke and how he fits into things. Yeah, 
from your perspective, how does Locke, who's going to be a free agent again, yep. came back last year, yeah. hits the market this year, does he fit on the depth chart? He does. He does. We'd love to have him back. And, uh, you know, the first year after we traded for him, he was supposed to have the second game, I believe. Yeah, it was against Chicago in the preseason. And he got COVID real bad. Um, lost his legs. So he plays in the third game against Dallas and just did not have his legs at all. Threw a couple balls that he'd love to have back. And then once that happened, you know, Shane Waldron, Pete, Dave Canales, those guys did a phenomenal job of, of, of instilling that confidence in Geno. And once, once Pete uh, named Geno the starter, Geno's confidence just went through the roof. Uh, Drew had a nice, you know, he had a nice year for us this year. Um, played those two games, played a great two games for us. And, uh, yeah, we'll be meeting with all, all those guys down here this week and Hopefully we can have him back. I, I'm, I'm, uh, I know you got to go. We got, I got one more for you. Just as far as like you know, almost culture-ish. You guys were almost close to a dynasty and all that stuff there, and damn uh, good. And I know. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to bring up bad memories, yeah. but the Chiefs right now. Yeah. Just you looking at them. I know you know Andy. Yeah. Right. What What impresses you about them, their culture? Maybe that you know the rest of us yeah, don't I'd, see. Yeah, I'd, I'd have to say Andy. You know yeah. that, that 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 staff that. I was blessed to be around just right out of college. It was a crazy staff, and yeah. he was really cool about bringing me in. He teaching me about tight end play and then just having that openness and his creativity and the way they reinvented themselves with mm -hmm. Patrick. I think it's, you know, I, you know, I've told John Lynch this, you know, you know, when I called him after the Super Bowl, I thought that they had the best roster in the National Football League, right. but I don't know how you compete down the stretch against that. No, no, that is, I think we're seeing rare stuff right there. Right, yeah, I, I agreed. Yeah, yeah, it's cool to hear you said that. Deal with it for like right. the next. I, yeah, it's after rare one stuff, of the playoff right. games, didn't feel like they were the better team, and they won because of he's that quarterback. To yep. the fans out there, and I've said this before: if you don't like it, watch something else in, <laughs> in, on Sundays in the fall because it's going to be another 10, 15 years of Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs and everybody else trying to figure out how to beat him. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.